Hello guys, welcome to our channel. It's a pleasure to see you again. Today we are going to talk about uh, one beautiful country that we was visiting recently and was amazing. Right, Katrin? Yes, Jose. This country is Georgia. Country in which history, culture, nature and gastronomy come together and amaze all the travelers. Yeah, but Georgia? But uh, people, in, they say that uh, they want to change the name to... Yes, it will be Sarkatvelo in Georgian language. So it's Georgia or... Sarkatvelo. The main city and capital of the, uh, Georgia is Tbilisi. Or in Georgian language they call as well uh, Tiflis. And what's amazing for the history, the culture, the nature and the food. Of course, you like so much Georgian food. Yes. I know it, I know it. Uh, well, the Georgia is a country where you can really uh, try some very tasty and delicious food. For example, you can taste uh, the kachapuri and the churchella, my favorite one. Mm, yeah. so confirm. By the way, Kinz Marouli, Georgian wine, semi sweet and red, which you, if you visit the country, must to try as well. Uh, Remember to subscribe and give like and comment below legal addiction we didn't see it we, we are, are in a legal, legal addiction. addiction subscribe comment below and like our adventure starts in Kutaisi Kutaisi is the second most important city in Georgia the distance from Tbilisi the capital of the country is 221 kilometers the Colchis fountain is situated at David Egmashene Belly Square and was built in 2011. It is a composi composition of 30 statues, horses, deers and lions. There are copies of small statues which are found during excavation in the Colchis lowland. Some of them are more than 5000 years old. What was Colchis? Colchis was an ancient Georgian kingdom and region on the coast of the Black Sea. In mythology of Colchis was the home of Medea and the Golden Fleece and the destination of the Argonauts. To find accommodation in Kutaisi is not a big problem at all. We chose hotel just for one night stay. It was Georgian Palace. Pretty nice room for double occupancy and the price was very nice. It was around $20 per night for two people including breakfast. In the morning we had breakfast in the restaurant on top of the hotel with a beautiful view to the hills and with a wonderful Bagrationi Cathedral on top. After breakfast our driver was waiting for us to start our trip to Rabat Castle in Ahalsihi. We spent around 3 hours on the road to get to the destination. After a large-scale reconstruction, the Rabat fortress was open for tourists in Georgian city of Akhaltsikhe. According to ex-president of the country, Mikhail Saakashvili, it is a wonderful addition to tourist roads to other ancient monuments such as Mtskheta and Mestia. Over 26 million laris, about 15 million US dollars, were allocated from Georgian state budgets for reconstructions. Originally, Georgian traditional garment was called Talavari in Georgian language, and the name Chotka was introduced from Persian, meaning the outfit made from fabric. The territory of Rabat covers about 7 hectares. Here, besides Georgian, there are examples of Arab, Byzantine, Turkish and Russian architecture. Thanks to the work, the historical appearance of the fortress of the 9th century has been restored. Its pools are decorated with mosaics and amphitheater, cafe and hotel are built. The Arabic word Rabat is translated as a fortified place. The fortress 
was built on a high hill and is visible from any point of the city. Rabat Castle was built in the 13th century and had seen many invasions and destructions. In the 13th century, the fortress was destroyed by the army of Tamerlan. The Majestic Fortress was in ruins. Then it was restored, but 100 years later it was again destroyed by Mongolian troops. Then came the Ottoman army and the army of the Russian Empire. In times of all the invasions, the fortress was of great strategic importance. The beautiful colonnade in the center of the fortress became something of symbol of the fortress after promotional video of Rabat was filmed here. This gallery is a 100% remake. There was never anything Moorish in Rabat and in the whole of Eastern Turkey this style didn't exist. Beautiful, elegant and photogenic for those who want to take a selfie. In the western part is the citadel. There is the highest point of the fortress and Ahalsihi. From here you can see the whole city and the countryside so you always want to climb the tower of the citadel. This is a kind of culmination of the whole visit. It is likely that the tower of the citadel is a remake. In addition to the tower, the citadel has an exhibition room with some photographs and room stylized as a Meshetian house. The fortress is divided in two parts, modern and historical. In the modern part there are restaurants, a hotel, cafes and shops. In the old part of the fortress there is Ahmadiyya Mosque, the church, the family castle of Jaheri and the historical museum. Ahmadiyya Mosque is a symbol and semantic center of the entire fortress. It was built in the 18th century and named after Ahmed Pasha, Kim Shashwili. Now the dome of the mosque is gilded, which gave rise to a number of holivers in the press. And this seems to be done in the form of a hint of the Omar Mosque in Jerusalem. In 1828, after the capture of Rabat by the Russian army, the mosque was turned into Orthodox Church of the Assumption of the Virgin. Now it is just an empty building where you can enter and look from the inside at the historic walls. A Christian church with a bell tower is usually the first building that appears on the way of a person who enters to the paid part of Rabat. It is interesting if only because it was built clearly in pre-Turkish times, at least until 1578. So what do you think? You think that they like the video? Hmm. Let's see, because I like the video. I like as well. So you know what you need to do? You need to subscribe. Like, comment below and... And the bell. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. We are waiting for you in the next video. See you. Don't lose. <laughs> we follow you.